Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here thank you for joining me. I'm Katie and I'm hungry for some art snacks. Cheesy intro aside, I thought since as I'd recently tried the Smart Art Box I'd give art snacks a try as well. I mean why not? I decided to go large and went with the Art Snacks box and here is what's in it. We've got the Grumbacher Hidden Wire Mixed Media Sketch Pad, a Molotow, Molotow Graphics Art Masking Pen, those are the bonus items. We also have for your regular Art Snacks the Kuritaki Ganzai Tambi Watercolour Pans. We have that in a, like a burgundy and a lilac, but I cannot tell you for the life of me what their official names are. We have a Kuritaki Brush H2O Petite Water Brush, which is pretty fancy. It turns in on itself, so it takes up a little less space. We have a Plumchester Size 8 Fine Liner and a Daniel Smith Extra Fine Watercolour Stick. So let's talk about what we've got a little bit more. The sketch pad, it was a bit, uh, I've got mixed feelings about it. The paper's really nice and I really like the fact you can rip out a page and put it back in again. I think that's a really useful gimmick because this swatch sheet right in front of you now is going to go right in the back of the sketch pad and I don't have to worry about having an ugly first page. I can rearrange that and I really like that idea. I think the build of it was a bit flimsy. I think it'll survive, but the card at the back of it where it attaches to the board, I know it's really trivial, but that was like a, a little misaligned and it it made them last few pages not quite sit as well. But aside from that, I was pretty pleased with it. It's not super thick paper, it's 185 GSM, but it can take a, a wash. It's not going to behave like watercolour paper. Your watercolours aren't going to be as vibrant, but yeah, I was pretty pleased with it. The masking fluid pen, I'm a big fan of these personally and I'm always happy to receive one of them. It worked quite nicely and smoothly. Not great for large areas, but that's not what it's about. The Kuritaki Ganzai Tambi watercolour pans. I have used regular ones before, but these are the first two that I actually own and they're a little bit weird. I've only got two colours to play with, so I can't massively utilise them as I would with a broader range. However, they're quite a nice complementary colour for the two of them. The Daniel Smith watercolour stick, it's a little bit similar to one of the Kur Kuritaki paints. However, because they're quite different types of watercolours, because they behave a little differently, I was willing to give it the benefit of the doubt. And hey, it's Daniel Smith, I'm always happy to have that. The Plum Chester fine liner, it wasn't like as good as a Faber-Castell, for example, or a Sakura, or a Unipen to feel. It felt quite cheap plastic, however, the pen performed quite nicely and I was quite happy with that. Now, I don't know if I was missing anything here, and like I say, this is another little one-off really, but there was no prompt and there was no art print and I found that was smart art as well and maybe the boxes I'm having from Scroll and Upcrate you get a nice print with a featured artist. I kind of I kind of miss that, it kind of acts as a nice bit of a guide to what to do and again there was no prompt which I thought was a little odd but hey each box is going to be different. So I have been watching YouTuber Kirsty Partridge Art and I'll leave a link to her channel in the description or the comments one or the other so make sure you check that out and she was doing a watercolour technique just using one colour on how to do forest perspective and this is something I struggle with and I've tried to do it before and I have got a video coming up where I'm using watercolour paints to do this and it doesn't look amazing but I'm gonna just say I styled it out more than anything but this is something I want to get good at I can't just stick to doing one thing all the time I want to get good at something and I thought this would be a perfect way to do so due to the limited colour palette range she only used one colour whereas I've got three to play with so I don't know if I made it more complicated for myself 
I used a very faint wash of the lilac colour and then added some very faint tree details in. It was really bizarre but watering that paint down it barely showed up on this paper so I'm gonna have to think where this can belong in my watercolour collection and whether it can be of any use long term or not. I'm sure I'll find a use. Anyhow, it still worked with the masking fluid which I laid down. Again, it's not great for large areas, but that's not what it's about. And I decided to add two unicorns running through a forest, because why not? The mid details I added with the Daniel Smith watercolour stick. And I must admit, I'm, I'm quite intrigued by these. I have looked into buying them, but it's Daniel Smith, so it's not cheap. So I was really glad I actually got to try one before making any decisions and it's not going to happen soon if I buy them, they're just too expensive right now. But I quite, I quite like the versatility of them, I quite like the fact I've got a lot of Daniel Smith pigment as well to work with, even if it's just one colour. I wasn't massively impressed by applying it directly to the paper and Unlike the ink tents, I don't feel like it left much of a mark behind. But apart from that though, pigment wise, it was beautiful. Because the masking fluid had been applied on a larger area and quite thickly, I do find it can affect the performance. I tend to add thin layers of masking fluid and I tend to find it doesn't tear up the paper as much and it's a little easier to remove but because obviously I used a fine nib to do it, a lot of it pooled in areas and did let some of that colour come through and some of it refused to leave the page. But again, I'm using it slightly incorrectly. Now, I don't know if I did the right thing here or not, but because that lilac background was just so pale, there was barely any contrast there and I didn't really want to go back through it all again and I couldn't tell until the masking fluid had gone. I decided to just add a bit of tonal detail again with that lilac and then add a very thin outline. Now I decided not to use the water brush on this because I wanted to work on larger surface areas and add different textures which is why I used my own brushes and I also used a sponge which is quite new for me but again that was a handy dandy tip I picked up from Kirsty Partridge Art. For the foreground layer, because the kuretake are quite opaque, I thought I'd use that darker tone that came with the set. I do tend to find they apply really smoothly and they sit a little differently to western style paints, but that, op that opacity worked out really well for that foreground because those lighter areas where the horse the, well, not the horses, the unicorns, I've got to stop saying the horses, they're unicorns. That area was still quite pale, but because it added a nice even texture, it worked out quite nicely. And applying it thickly over itself again also worked out well and just added a little bit more texture and dimension. I don't think this is a bad attempt for trying to create some perspective and a bit of a scene. Maybe the unicorns could have been done a bit better, but horses are notoriously difficult to draw, don't you know? The paper itself, I think, is definitely more of a mixed media rather than suitable solely for watercolours, so I am looking forward to trying other techniques on this. However, I did find it was very good at releasing the masking tape and we had no problems there. So, Art Snacks is $48.99, which is about £40 in the UK. That's quite expensive for a monthly commitment, but again, like Smart Art, I think I might just have it as an occasional treat, because I did quite enjoy this box. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed creating it. And if you did, don't forget to give me a like and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. You've heard me say this about a million times, but please do, it really helps me out. And I just want to say a massive thank you to those of you who have subscribed. It really does mean the world to me. Anyway, don't forget to drop in the comments what you think and I will see you on the next video.